Hi, this is Roger Infield, and today we're going to take a look on how to use your Sony camera as a webcam. For the impatient ones, you just need to install the software that I put the link in the description below, install it, plug your camera through USB, and use it as a normal webcam. That's it. Now, for those of you that want some more details, let's go through the steps. First of all, you need to download the software that is available through the Sony Imaging Edge webcam web page and I put a link below but let's take a look at that. So this is their web page here they have actually pretty good instructions even though you don't need much of them but we're gonna go ahead and then download the software. Here you're gonna have to choose what camera is your use case. For me it's the Sony A6400 so that's what I would do. Choose it here and then download the software. I'm not sure what are the differences but if Sony is giving us the option then let's use it wisely. As you can see, Sony is offering this option to plenty of their offering. Most of this A7 series, then lots of the APS-C options also, some of the older DSLRs, and then lots of the point and shoot like the RX100 family or the new ZV-1. Once we have selected this, we just download the piece of software and install it. I have done it, but it's basically next, next, next degree, yes, next, 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 or something like that. After you've installed the software, you don't need to do pretty much anything and there's no software that you need to be running in your computer in order to use it. They have added just one thing, I'm going to show it to you, which is a reset USB option that you can see right here in case of something gets stuck, I suppose. I haven't had to use it once and I have this software installed in two different computers that I've been using. Uh, my A6400 as a webcam has been just working fine all the time, but I suppose that if there's something a bit clunky, you just click this USB reset and then you're good to go. But now let's take a look at how to use this in practice. For me, the main use case is Google Meet. So that's what I have open here. I'm just going to create a new meeting, start instant meeting, and I'm joining the meeting. Now you can see that the camera is not turned on, but because I have used it already before, it's already offering me the option. Now I don't need to optimize my microphone in finish. And here, in case you're not familiar with Google Meet, this is how you would change the settings. This is the webcam. And now, well, this is a really good reason why I would like to use this one instead. So let's use the Sony Imaging Edge webcam. And now it's not showing anything because the camera is not plugged. So I'm going to plug it with the USB cable. Turn it on and then you'll see what happens also to the camera. It basically connects through the USB and then with the software it knows that I want to use it as a webcam and there we are. And now if I join the meeting, I don't need to add anybody else, you're just watching this video, I'm having a meeting with myself, but here it is, we're using the Sony A6400 as a webcam. Let's hang this up, shall we? As I mentioned before, for me, the main use case is Google Meet. So that's the one that I showed and the one that I know that it works for sure. I did test it also with YouTube Live. I didn't use it, but I just wanted to test it. I didn't end up going live just to test that the setup works. It would work well for that also, meaning that it would work better than a normal webcam. This is still not as good as if you would have probably a capture card that would get like full HD or 4K resolution into your computer. We're gonna get to that in a moment, but still better than your um, silly laptop webcam. Then I assume that because this is just acting like a normal webcam and just two services that I tried it works, I would very much like to assume that it will work with Zoom meetings, Skype calls, and whatever else that you might need a webcam for. I was mentioning before the resolution, so and please remember that this is just a micro USB cable to normal USB, so don't expect here for 4K resolution so what it actually does it outputs as a webcam that would have a resolution of 1024 by 768 so that's the resolution of the webcam that you're getting but i think that you're getting for sure a way better image quality with any of your possible sony cameras that you would get from a webcam in the same resolution range so what is the use case for this well because the world is in the shape it is most of us do a lot more of online meetings nowadays and let's be honest integrated webcams in our laptops are not good and specifically, I really dislike the camera in the Dell XPS 15, at least the one that I have from the year 2017, where the camera is on the below, 
the screen. I call it the nostril cam because that's the angle you get. If I try to raise the camera so it's at the eye level and the framing and distortion looks okay, then the keyboard is visible, that's awful. Once again, if I put the computer on top of the table and then I start typing something, it really looks like two loops coming up from the depths and invading your lives. Or that somebody just dropped a bunch of sausages in front of the camera. Either way, that's not good. After six months of remote working, I started using the setup during this week. The reactions I've been getting so far are like, whoa, this is way too cinematic for this meeting. Or, whoa, man, you're in the movies. Or, what camera are you using for this? And then I just explain this. Then when it comes to other brands, this is not exclusive from Sony. I know that Canon released something similar, I believe, during the summer. Olympus has released a similar functionality for some of their cameras. Then Panasonic did release an uh, advanced or a beta version of the tethering option for computers just through the USB. And then in that case, you had to then capture that particular window using OBS and then use the virtual cam from OBS. But at least I did not get to work it smoothly. And anyway, I think it's too many steps. I like the solution of USB straight to the computer, use as a webcam, forget about any extra piece of software or any other headaches. This just works. What things you should pay some attention to? Well, for one, image quality, meaning framing, lighting, and lens selection. Think about any video shooting situation that you would be doing. And this is something we all should be thinking while we're framing ourselves using the webcam as well. The second one is battery. Even if I have to set it up so that this USB is charging the battery of the S6400, when it's turned on, the battery drains in a faster rate than the USB cable is able to charge it. So it doesn't last forever. In my setup, again, a 6400 Dell XPS 15 from 2017 and a normal USB cable, this camera lasted for four hours worth of meetings straight. So that covers pretty much my needs for meetings of one day. And I have a couple of spare batteries. And the other option is that if you have meetings staggered along the day, just close the camera and while the camera is off, then the USB cable will be for sure charging the battery. All right, I hope you found this video useful or helpful. If you did, please like and subscribe and we're gonna see you soon for some more content. Thank you.